Avenged Sevenfold is one of the craziest rock bands of all time. From living on one dollar a day, to selling more than eight million albums, to saving a fan's life in a shocking death that came way too soon. Being the drummer for this truly insane band is not for the faint of heart, and I bet there are four different drummers would agree. This is the impossible job of Avenged Sevenfold's drum. Did you know that Avenge Sevenfold's drummer actually helped to save someone's life? Well, it's true. A fan at one of their concerts was dropped on their head and broke their neck when crowd surfing. But how did their drummer help save him? Well, by doing the hardest thing that a drummer can do, stop drumming. It started as a fun night for 41-year-old Chris Martin, but it landed him here in the hospital bed in a lot of pain with serious injuries. <laughs> So hey, someone's really hurting there. Hey, don't touch their neck, let them, let some professional do it. That could have been a lot worse. And as drummers, it can be really hard to get us to stop playing. But how did this all begin? This is Jimmy The Rev Sullivan. He is Avenged Sevenfold's founding drummer and is considered one of the most talented metal drummers to ever live. Seriously, in fact, he was a drumming prodigy even as a kid, because even at 13 years old, he already had pretty sick chops. He was 10, 13. He wrote this piece for us. For 13, that was pretty sick, especially considering this is what happened when I tried playing drums at 13. I apparently didn't really know what clothes were at the time either. But how did the Rev become such a legend? Well, it actually starts with him being homeless. I was always, you know, in and out of homes, living in my car, living in a laundromat at work. But even through those trying times, he never lost his sense of humor. Turns out this was good practice though, because the band would have to survive on practically nothing to make it into the hard rock world. We had like a dollar a day food budget which was actually putting us in debt. You know, we're digging ourselves a hole. This was the level of dedication that they held on to, and they weren't making a single cent from their shows. We toured for years without making a cent that we're playing in front of literally no one. Yeah, I, I've been there too. In fact, most of the time when you play shows at this level, you're actually losing money every single day. With that amount of dedication, it's easy to see how they've made it so far. But this was just the start of their impossible journey because coming up, we're talking about a death that shook the metal world forever and the multiple drummers who couldn't fill the role. To be Avenged Sevenfold's drummer, it's gonna require you to play drums even when your bones are broken. The Rev was known for his extreme dedication, but sometimes it got to an unsafe level. While in the recording studio, Jimmy actually broke his hand, but being the hardcore rocker that he is, that didn't stop him. Not even two weeks afterwards, he was in the studio writing out and playing drum parts for the album with just one arm. Jimmy definitely deserves a hand for his dedication. <laughs> Maybe Jimmy was like the original Estepario Siberiano. Okay, so to be Event Sevenfold's drummer, you've got to be tough, but how tough exactly? There is one thing about the Rev's drumming that makes him so insane, and that's his blazing fast double kicks. So what he's doing after those triplets at the beginning is he's playing combinations of four, so at that tempo is, is really hard to articulate. But the Rev's talent didn't just stop at his drumming. The Rev could also do something that most other drummers just can't do. And that's the fact that he could sing really well. Plus, he could even do it drunk. And he would show up hammered to do vocals. And then the little piece of heaven almost didn't get through it. <laughs> he was so drunk. He wanted to just keep screaming so bad, and it was like, he finally nailed it. It's crazy. Yeah, normally drunk singing sounds 
a little more like this. La la la, be like you do. Touch me like you do. But the Rev's talent doesn't stop there because he was also an insane piano player and songwriter too. This impossible job not only requires you to be a master metal drummer, singer, and piano player, but you also have to write a ton of the band's songs. It starts to make more and more sense why multiple different drummers couldn't fill his spot. I mean, the Rev was basically like a one-man band. Okay, maybe his version was a, a little bit cooler than that. The band has been known for their insane antics, like using the subway to work on your acrobatics. The subway's packed with people. He, he's like, I'm gonna do a handstand in the subway. So this guy comes walking out with a bunch of groceries and his heel catches five bags of groceries. And the groceries go flying all over the subway car and his feet are up in the air with a bag hanging from his feet. And the guy's furious, obviously. There's food all over everybody. Or the time that they made the grossest sandwich in the world. This is a poop sandwich. This is what made me realize that this role is pretty freaking impossible and I could never fill it myself because when I'm on tour, I'm doing way crazier stuff like eating salads, going to bed at 9.30, talking to my wife. It gets wild. But don't let these weird antics distract you from their godlike talent. Because in just a single song, The Rev incorporated multiple different drumming styles. A hip hop, a lot of hip hop. Yeah, but it's just groove and stuff. Yeah, well it has a, it definitely has like a funk. Yeah. Right. Then he plays a unique punk beat. I know he was very influenced by you, especially from the punk thing. So instead of playing a metal part for this, right. this is punk. This is punk. And he even throws in a freaking drum solo. <laughs> and all those placements are just so bizarre. Now it's one thing to write sick parts like that, but it's another thing to completely improv them. Avenged Sevenfold's first album had some insane drum parts on them. But what's even more insane is that the Rev improved almost all of it. He's been quoted by Modern Drummer as saying, on the first record, I didn't write out anything really. It was all improv and I recorded it in one day with just one take for almost every song, which is ridiculous. To his credit, he was like, well, I know all these songs. I'm just gonna play them one time. He played like six songs and we're like, I mean, we have no comments. So we just kept going. Then by the end of it, he's like, I'm gonna do this whole record in one take. Now there's a couple things in the record, you know, like that he probably should have redone, but to him, it was all about not redoing anything. All right, I know you guys are counting how many times I say impossible, but that sounds pretty um, nuts. Impossible. Jimmy was a one of a kind drummer and he really made the band and what an incredible band they made. They developed a huge fan base and some really insane music. They had finally made their dreams come true until tragedy struck. James Owen Sullivan, drummer for the band Avenged Sevenfold, was found dead in his home today. He was 28 years old. Tragically, in 2009, Jimmy Sullivan passed away. The band was left with a ginormous hole that seemed impossible to fill, and fans around the world were devastated. Honestly, I can't believe it. Oh. He will be greatly missed. Because I don't think there is a drummer out there that is better than him. And even after his death, he's continued to trailblaze with his best friends on the new Avenged Sevenfold album. By using a drum bridge and lyrics from Jimmy, it's like his ghost returned for one final chance to rock out with his friends. Now, even though the band has written many songs about the Rev, he actually wrote a song that seemed like it predicted his own passing. It's hard to find another way to explain how he wrote a song with a farewell on it just three days before he died. We're gonna slow it down a little bit for our brother James the Rev Sullivan who passed away. And it turns out that this job was even more impossible to fill than the band could have ever imagined. Because coming up, we'll talk about the three different drummers who have tried to fill the role and how since they've even used DMT to work on their songwriting process. Now, let's talk about how sick this drum pattern by The Rev is. The Rev took the concept of playing odd time signatures to the next level. And 
If you want to sound more like the Rev's sick drumming, go ahead and click the Sweetwater link in my description to pick up your favorite piece of gear on that page. Plus, it's drum month at Sweetwater, so a bunch of gear on that page is actually discounted right now. Go ahead and click the link below. It's also a great way to support the channel. Thank you so much to Sweetwater for sponsoring this section of the video. After Jimmy passed, not only had the band lost their best friend, but they had lost the beat that held them together. He's like the guy that kind of the centerpiece of what everything was built around. You know, for us, you look over to the bunk that he's supposed to be and he's not there. There is only one person who Avenged wanted to try to fill this impossible role. And that was one of Jimmy's biggest heroes, Mike Portnoy. But shockingly, even Portnoy couldn't cut it. They just weren't ready to commit yet. And I think with me came too much history. So I understand why, uh, you know, after my commitment to the, to the year was over, that they wanted more of a, an unknown drummer with Aaron. That's insane. Portnoy had inspired Jimmy's sound and skill, and even he couldn't fill those shoes. At this point, I don't know if anyone can replace Jimmy. Could the band even survive without him? One reason that Portnoy couldn't cut it was that his sound was too defined. The band wanted someone with a bit more room to grow. So they bet on a relatively unknown drummer. Aaron Illahai. Could you imagine being a relatively unknown drummer and then getting picked up by a massive band like Avenged Sevenfold? That would be insane and incredibly difficult. Aaron is a sick drummer and I actually toured with his band on my first tour with I Prevail. He's an awesome dude and an awesome drummer. So why didn't things work out? Every now and then I would try and throw in like, you know, like a Jimmy fill or like something a little bit more elaborate, something crazy, something like, you know, over the top. And it was like, no, 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 like that's not what we're going for. Even though Aaron drummed for one of their most successful records yet, Hail to the King, it was called derivative and panned by many outlets. While the charts loved the sound, the critics didn't. And the classic Avenged Sevenfold always loved to push the envelope. And for them, putting out an album that felt safe showed how lost they really were without Jimmy. How could they ever recover? At this point, they've had two different drummers who couldn't fill this impossible role. They went from being one of the most exciting new bands to struggling to survive. All these ups and downs were like an insane roller coaster. It seemed like no one could take up the impossible job of Avenged Sevenfold's drummer until this guy showed up. This is Brooks Wackerman, and he was the next drummer to step up to the plate to try to fill this impossible role. But what made Brooks different? Well, to start, he had played with some of the most iconic bands of the era. And just like Jimmy, Brooks was born to drum. I mean, the guy's name is Wackerman. Get it? Like, Wacker man? He was actually born into a family of drummers and has some funny stories from when he was just a little Wacker boy. Did your dad push drums on I you? I would wake up, eat my Captain Crunch, <laughs> and then play drums. My dad and mom used to take me to Zappa rehearsals, and Frank actually had me sit in with a band. Drumming for Frank Zappa at six years old? The only thing I knew how to do at six was be cute. But as much as Brooks had the talent to keep up with Avenged Sevenfold, his personality is what really sealed the deal. You can't get along with Brooks Wackerman, then, okay. you, <laughs> then you have a problem. To all you drummers who want a tour, remember, you have to be a good hang, because you are going to be crammed into small spaces with a bunch of people. And the easier you are to be around, the higher likelihood you are of keeping the gig. I remember first time I saw you guys, on the warp tour, I was sitting right behind Jimmy and I noticed just how precise his feet were. So Brooks had the talent and the history with the band, combine that with being the chillest dude on the planet, and Avenged Sevenfold finally found someone who fit into the family. But would the fans turn against this third replacement drummer? Would he be able to fill the hole that Jimmy left? Or would he fade away after just one album like the drummers before him? But thankfully the fans embraced him and have said that he's been the best drummer for the band 
since Jimmy. And these fans are not an easy crowd to please. I mean, they have to be pretty opinionated people to appreciate the radical new sounds the band consistently delivers. What I love about having Brooks in this band is that it's opened up a whole new dynamic of things we can explore. But just because they finally found their drummer from another mother doesn't mean that the job gets any easier. From consistently changing up their sound to taking seven years to write an album. It's been 84 years. Avenge lives to challenge whoever sits on the drum throne. And in case this job wasn't hard enough, the band is notorious for their revolutionary sounds. If you want to play for them, you have to be ready to try something different every single time. We're just going with wherever, you know, wherever life takes us right now. No two Avenged albums sound alike, but what does it take to be that experimental? Well, it takes seven years of writing and a little bit of psychedelics. Five MEO DMT psychedelic experience. And what happens with those experiences is you experience a thing called ego death. The whole world fractaled out, like the whole thing just started breaking apart. Reality started breaking apart and I left my body. Taking seven years to write one album, well, that seems pretty insane. But would the Rev approve of Wackerman's new sound? Well, their lead singer, Matt, certainly thinks so. But it's been nothing but a pleasure because we enjoy him so much and we enjoy his personality. And he's just a killer. He can play anything. And if you want to learn some of the exact drum parts of these insane songs and hone in your drum skills so you can fill an impossible role someday, then click here to join my online drum school, DBO Academy. And if you want to learn the three genius secrets that made The Rev such a good drummer, click right here.